world and every event we seem to go to michael there's just new faces this is the beauty of nine ball yeah and with these open formats guys like this are coming in as curious as the rest of us as to how they're going to acquit themselves at this level so let's find out then no ben say has got us underway in this opening rack yeah and the big thing i'm looking for obviously this is the first match i've commentated on is this break shot because as you can see that little box at the top where that pink four ball is sat in that is the box the cue ball has to be in when you are now breaking you are not allowed to break from the rail so explain to us carl now what difference is that going to make to the players you completely lose all control of the cue ball let's just compare it to the older break where the one ball is on the spot it was very easy to make the wing ball pocket the wing ball in the corner every time even your good self michael could achieve that feat and controlling the cue ball was just so so easy now players are going to try and play a hard cut break and the cue ball is going to fly around the table a lot more and i do believe we're going to see a few more scratches on the break but first glance here that red three ball is in a tricky little spot and i do believe over the course of the week balls are not gonna come out off the break as pretty as the old break players will be trying to pop that yellow one ball in the side pocket we'll discuss that on the next break and we'll see where it goes i'll explain a little bit more about that but it's looking like a safety shot a no very important for this type of player the unknown player no disrespect to get off to a good start and that's a job well done Oh, yeah, absolutely. Again, we saw that at the UK Open, didn't we? That there were some guys who were going in as massive outsiders against big names on the big tables. And before they really got into the match, they were already so far behind that they were starting to play under enormous pressure. Kicking two rails. He will have a chance of potting this red ball in the corner Up your first shot your first kick just try and hit the ball it's a little bit full and now it's another chance for Noel so this will give us a good indication of how he's feeling it's a bit of a long pot is it going to go in clean or is it kind of going to wobble in let's have a look and he's just sizing up the angle from the pink four to get on the green six She's down the bottom end of the table. It went in very clean indeed. Good shot. Needs another good one here, though. It's going to force this cue ball round off a couple of rails. Very early stages, but we were saying earlier how some players, when they're in this situation that they're not familiar with, out there under the spotlight, that you can tell straight away they're actually quite comfortable with it and they're not phased by it at all. And very often it's just a few shots you need to be able to establish which category the player falls into. And at the moment, signs are that Ben Say is more than happy to be out there in the main arena. Just needs another good shot here, doesn't it? Because the natural path of the cue ball, after potting this six, the cue ball is going to run into the eight ball. So he's got to put a bit of side spin on this cue ball, get it moving. Can he play it with a bit of right? Go around the table. Oh, he's playing it with a bit of left. And he's gone into the nine. And I believe he's hooked himself. That's a misjudgment. Yeah, he just put a little bit of left spin on the cue ball there to avoid the eight, but then to be honest, the nine ball was always going to come into play, and now he's playing a jump shot. 
into the top left. Where's the seven going to end up? It's going near the cue ball. That's not the worst result. Whenever you don't pop the ball and the ball's flying around the table, you just need a little bit of luck. And well, he certainly had that there. So Lucius Yap has got to come with maybe a, a bank to the side pocket or a safety. Playing safe, trying to get the cue ball on the bottom rail. Maybe bouncing the brown 7 2 rails up towards that top rail, just leave big distance. He's got the 8 and 9 as blockers, that's what he's played. Distance he's got, he's not got the hook, but he's got some distance. For the reasons you were outlining earlier with the different breaking rules, Carl, do you think racks like this will be more the norm throughout the week where there's a bit of a story to it and a few twists along the way rather than normal break and run being everything that we are used to seeing? Yeah, without a doubt. You know, you will see break and runs and, and things like that. But over the course of this event, if someone was going round watching every table and marking every break shot down and dry breaks and scratches it is going to be a lot different and that's what you want really you know it becomes a bit boring doesn't it just just watching break run break run you know y you don't mind seeing break and clearances but you want to see the top players play these type of shots these positions because Noel's under the gun now this is not easy to get safe He's had a go at the bank. Is he going to fluke it in the top left? I don't think he is. It's not got the speed. Or has it? Oh. Well, I was with you, Carl. Halfway there, it didn't look like it had any chance, but it just refused to stop until it got to the very lip. It always looked like it was a millimetre short of base, Michael. That's the precision of Carl Boys. You can judge it down to the millimetre. The thing is here now, of course, obviously, seven, no problem to pop that. But coming in and out of the jaws like this, so difficult to control the cue ball. Yeah, this is actually a horrible shot he's faced with. I think he's just maybe not trying to get too, too accurate with his shot. Just try and play into a massive area. He might even try and draw down this left side of the table. If he gets anywhere near the side pocket, he'll be delighted. Well, you're not going to hit that one any better than that. You'll be very happy with that. Yeah, that might not look like much to some people, but anyone who's ever played the game knows that was an absolutely fantastic shot. And the way it's finished, you would suspect it's probably going to set him up to take this opening rack. Well, that positional shot will work. He's actually held his hand up, so he must have been playing for another pocket. But it is the opening rack. Goes towards Lucius Yap. Yeah, Ben Say certainly got into it. Was looking quite confident and comfortable early on. But it's Lucius Yap who's won the opener. He leads 1-0. Now, Robert Braga of Romania is on the hill against Gerasimos Trivzias of Greece, it's 8-5 in that one, over on table seven. And another Romanian going well, Babkin Melkonian. 7-6 in front against Hassan Osman of Sudan. We're talking about Yap and his run with Singapore to the World Cup final. Well, his partner in that, Tolian Han, 
in action at the moment, but trailing 7-3 against Clemens Hebert. So many Germans in the field. It's about a quarter of the field, and I guess that's going to be the nature of it with an open format. We saw it at the UK Open. So many British players there, and some who exceeded perhaps even their own expectations with how far they got. Yeah, and I bet a lot of them German players in the event, I bet there's a lot of young guys as well, so players we're not familiar with, but players that are probably very dangerous, so it's going to be an interesting four days to see you can try and make it to that TV stage of last 16. Yap to break, let's see what he's about. Look at the yellow one ball. He's trying to play into that left centre. It just hit the jaw, and that is the beauty of this break. This is why the players wanted it changing because of that shot alone. No wing ball. One ball just catches the jaw and it's a dry break. Do you think that's going to favour the, the bigger names or perhaps the outsiders or is it going to impact on everyone equally? Yeah, I've been asked this before and I've always kind of felt that it's going to favour the the top players but maybe it's not going to because maybe if the wing ball's guaranteed and the top players can get on a roll can the lesser player do that I don't know I'm going to I'm gonna have to sweat the action but I think overall when the balls are a little bit more tricky so let's take this position you would always fancy the better pool player to come out on top and it's something that the players, particularly the better, more experienced players, will, I guess, be looking to figure out as the week goes on, try and find ways to make the best of the rule changes. Yeah, we will see players who are consistently potting that yellow one in the side. Somebody I'm very intri intrigued to watch will be SVB, the best breaker in pool. Can't wait to see what he's got up his sleeve. Yeah, world champion Shane Van Boning. Not in action today. He's due on tomorrow against Martin Breuer, one of those many Germans in the field. I believe he's not actually here yet. I think he had his flight cancelled. So hopefully he'll make it in good time later today to be prepared before we see him tomorrow. He can just get the cue ball through the gap, so that's handy. Just going to bank this one ball up table. Mm, is it all wrong? He's going to be in trouble now. Well, actually, this one ball does pot in the corner. It goes past that pink four. All depends on how you're feeling, I suppose, this shot. If he's got such an easy lock-up safety and you feel like that is guaranteed, you would play it, but it looks like he's gearing up for the pot here. It's a big pocket near that pink four ball. And you can see, as long as it's anywhere down the rail, this should fall. Oh, he's caught the middle jaw. but it could have been worse. Certainly could. Looks like he's had a bit of a result there. It was always in the lap of the gods once it came off the jaw. But the gods have favoured him there. Yeah, we were talking about Shane then. Another player I'm intrigued to watch will be Francisco Sanchez Ruiz, another a big breaker of the, the rack. I'm boning one of those people who I think spent a lot of time thinking about breaking and trying to find ways of just playing standard break-off shots better. So he'll have spent some time thinking about this. He'll have contemplated it and have decided on his approach. Yuri Pishklov uh, over on the other table. 2-1 up now against Ralph Zuke, and He's had a fantastic 
break in rack four. Did he get four balls off the break there? No, you were keeping an eye on that, Carl. Yeah, I was just having a little nosy because I want to pay attention to how everyone's breaking, and he, he made a great break shot there. The, th the big thing is, though, I know we're going to call it the old break, but with the one on the spot, everybody in the tournament can break. The difference now is not everyone in the tournament is going to handle this break too good, which lends itself to the better players. And this is what we're seeing here from Yap. He's played two good shots to open this up because he was in trouble. He needs another good one. Very smooth on the cue. Just watch the delivery of his cue. Oh, he's played a wonderful positional shot there. It was a little bit dicey with the cue ball. And from that fortunate roll that Noel had, just look what Yap has carved out. And over on the other main table, Yuri Pishklov has carved out a 3-1 lead, taking that fourth rack in no time at all against Ralph Suke. So not been a good morning so far for the German legends of the game with Torsten Homan's defeat. Suke trailing 3-1 early on in his match. No, oh, this was definitely not in the script, was it? On the opening day of day one. The script is going okay for Yap. This has been a wonderful effort. Because when he comes to the table, he was hooked on the one. We do see players kicking them balls in one nail quite a lot. what's going on in the background there. I think someone throwing cues around the room. I know exactly what's going on, Michael, because I've been there, I've got the T-shirt. There's still no cue acts in the event. I'm, I'm going to cause uproar after <laughs> this. Uproar. Cues are just falling all over the gaff. Come on, let's get some cue racks. Well, not quite with the same speed, but the racks are falling in the match to Alusius Yap. And he has eased his way into a 2-0 lead over Noel Bensay. You're on the way to Singapore in a few days, Carl. Tell us about that. Yap's home country. Yeah, I'm flying out there to cover big tournament over there. The Asian Open. It's going to be an interesting trip. I'm sure there's, well, I'm sure there's some unknown monster pool players over there that we just don't get to see travel. That will be an eye opener. Well, the US Open has obviously been around for a long time. As we were saying, we've got the UK Open now and similar philosophy behind it, I guess. Now this European Open, in time, we're going to have an Asian Open on the same scale. You would think that's inevitable in the next couple of years and that's what we're hoping to build towards with that tournament in Singapore later this month. Singapore's leading player is leading this match. There you see the one ball, but there you see the cue ball. This is going to happen you will definitely see a few more scratches because you cannot control the cue ball. But at least he made the one ball. And that is not easy to do, you know. I had a couple of goals at it myself last week and to try and pop the one ball in that side pocket time and time again is such a tough shot. Well, you know, we always talk about the importance of getting that first rack on the board when you're coming in as a big outsider. And that was actually a really good chance for Ben Say. Quitted himself fairly well at the start of the match, but just starting to see a little bit of frustration and nerves perhaps growing. But again, that could have turned out worse. Yeah, ball in hand. Whenever you miss with ball in hand, it is not a good sign. 
You know, the longer it takes to get off the mark, the harder it becomes. That was another shot where he was trying to go rail first and pop the ball. Chance number two. Yeah, he's already passed up one decent one in this rack. And if he's to have any hopes of pulling off the second upset we've seen on the main table today. Really got to start making the most of opportunities like this one. Not got a big history in the game, France. But can you tell me, Carl, the name of the one Frenchman to have played in the Moscone Cup for Europe? Vincent Facke. Very good. He's actually playing in this event as well. Yep. I've seen him yesterday. I've not seen him for years. You like to throw a little question in and test me, don't you, now and again, Michael? Only because I know you're up to it. Keep passing with flying colours. Oh, but certainly you could not say that Noel Bense is coming through this match with flying colours at the moment or anything like it. He's had several bad shots now, and that can certainly be added to the catalogue. Yeah, just pushed it into that near jaw. Usually it does stay up on the table. That was a nice bank shot from Yap because... Even though he's leading 2-0, the run of the ball has not really been in his favour, so he's had to stay patient to the game. He knows his opponent is struggling, so that's good news for Yap. And this is just... It's been a polished performance so far. Table 2 is not going the way of the Hall of Fame of the legend, Ralph Suke. He trails 4-1. Yeah, against Yuri Pishklov, who's at the table again in the next rack. He's actually just had a really bad miss on the three, so maybe a chance for Suke to get back into that one. And I couldn't agree more with what you were saying there. Yap has not had the running so far in this match. A number of the times that Ben Say has made mistakes, he's actually not left them as easy as he might have done. But Yap really growing in control here. And the man from Singapore now leads by three racks to nil. Hassan Osman I was telling you about from Sudan. He's clinging on against Babken Melkonian, who's still on the hill, the Romanian, now leading 8-7. Imran Majid. Can you believe he's 50 this year? He's leading Michael Vollmer, another of the large German contingent, 6-2. Mark Beisterbosch, very familiar name from the Netherlands, 5-1 up against Daniel Munoz Oliveira of Spain. Nicolas de Leon of the United States has eased through with a 9-0 win over yet another German, Michael Croman. A Lucius Yap leading 3 0. Made the one ball, so he's definitely getting in the zone on the break. Two ball is near the nine ball. We will have a look in a minute at what option he's got. Yeah, here's what's going on over on table two. I told you that Plishkov, or Pishkov rather, had missed a straightforward three by some margin, in fact, and Ralph Suke got back into the rack and he's managed to take it and is clinging on there. He now trails 4-2. Remember all the table two action available on the Matchroom Pool YouTube channel. You can watch Table 1 throughout on the Matchroom Pool Facebook page, and all of it is on Matchroom.live throughout these first few days before we move to the TV stage over the weekend. You'll still be able to follow the action in terms of streaming. 
all the way through to the close of play tonight. Now, is he looking at an audacious combination here, Carl? Yeah, he's definitely on. Just needs to make it a little bit. But his big favourite. Oh, he's missed that by a long way up. Yeah, when we saw it initially, it looked almost impossible. When you looked at it from the overhead angle, as you said, you thought, okay, that's definitely on, but nowhere near us. I know we are talking a lot about the break, but I think that just underlines what a big role it plays in this game. People compare it to the serve in tennis. If anything, it's perhaps even more important than that. I'm just looking at the stats we have in front of us in terms of the number of times players have run out from the break during matches. Of those who have won, I can only see one who's done that in three racks. Abdullah Alenzi of Kuwait in his 9-4 win over the South African, Mohamed Daidat. He had three runouts from the break. He's the only player I've seen do that so far. Yep, he's got the jump cue. He's got to jump over the edge of this six, trying to pop the two in the top left. You always fancy one of the top players to go close to this type of shot. It's not the most difficult of jump shots. We said when Ben Say has missed straightforward balls, he's been largely getting away with it. And Yap has missed a tricky one there. And it looks as though he could be punished for it. But again, this is going to be telling, isn't it? Can Ben Say cope with this situation where he's got a good chance here to start getting into the match? Although he looked quite comfortable in that opening rack, since he failed to win it, he seems to have become more and more anxious. Can he put that to one side here? Just going to need another good positional shot here. He's obviously not feeling the best out there. He's looked a little shaky at times. She's tracking down okay. Doesn't want to land on the rail. If the cue ball lands on the rail going to make this next shot a little bit trickier. Needs the cue ball to slow down. Oh. He's overrun it. And this was all caused by the previous shot. Will he play the bank into the side? I think he's got to try and make something happen. It's not quite gone his way so far. Well, he knows coming into a match like this, nobody's expecting him to win it. But the big fear is that you're going to be a little bit humiliated and end up getting beaten 9-0. First priority is to avert that possibility. And once that's done... He might settle into it a bit more. He's still got that hanging over his head. Decided to play the distance safe. Don't blame him, really. He was trying to use the green to hook his opponent. Just to update you on what's coming up later. It's just been announced the 2.30 match. On table one will be Chris Melling against Janiewski. So that'll be the second match for both of them. Winners round one officially. Remember, you've got to win three matches to come straight through the winner's side to single elimination. And it'll be Matt Edwards against Pius Labutas. Also, second match for both of those players in the 2.30 match. Fourth on on the other main table. So 
boy is going to be difficult for Yap that. But he's just kept him at the table, hasn't he? You could see he was trying to get the cue ball behind the brown seven, but whenever you're rolling it that slow over that type of distance, it's never easy. Decision time for Noel. Not easy to play safe. I'm not sure if he can play a cross bank. He could cut it down the left rail into this corner, but that's a lot thinner than what this TV camera tells us. But he's got to, he's got to come with some. Needs to make something happen in this match. He's had chances. He's gone for the long rail, but he's missed it, and that's going to set up opportunity for Yap. leading just them little flicks and things that sometimes you need to go your way it's just not quite happening there you could see it at the six a little full well he's having a look to pop the nine he's going to flick off the edge of the six try and send the cue ball into the rail and then pop the nine. If he misses that, the cue ball will run over towards the seven ball. So there's a couple of things going on here. Keep an eye on the nine. He's chasing. Ralph Suke still battling back well. Was 4-1 down against Yuri Pishklov in the old German clash. It's 4-3 now. He's just got to pop the six here. Don't get too adventurous with this cue ball. Don't try and spin it in and get too giddy. He's aiming low on the cue ball, though, so he's going to try it. Oh, and this is the problem. You get too giddy. It's going to cost you the rack now. Another chance gone and another rack. It's been the story of the match so far, really, hasn't it? Ben Say having his chances. Not really proving up to it so far, and Yap, without doing anything spectacular, is just picking him off, and he's almost halfway to victory already. He leads 4-0. So let's take a look at what's going on elsewhere. Imran Majid, he's having a really good year, isn't he? He's having so many good results in different tournaments and rolling back the years, as it were. He's just won 9-2 against Michael Vollmer. Max Lechner, well-known player from Austria, leading Eric Kohler, 5-2 at the moment. And Robert Hart, the American, remember we saw him on the main table at the Copper Box in the UK Open, didn't really acquit himself all that well, but he has today. He's beaten Eero Rompainen of Finland 9-1. Robbie Capito through. Mateusz Sniagotski. Just looking at all these names who have won. We've not seen many matches go against what we would have expected. Obviously, Torsten Homan's defeat earlier. Very much the exception to that. And Tolian Han. Yaps, fellow Singapore player. Well, he's on the brink of defeat, trailing Clemens Ebert 8-5. Yap leading 4-0 here in total control. Well, he's made the one ball again, but again the cue ball was scratched on the break. So he started to find the range a little bit with pocketing the one in that side. 
Here's another look. What's the yellow one ball? Straight in the side pocket. But the cue ball follows it. Another chance for the Frenchman. And the balls are sat very nice, aren't they? Very nice indeed. No question about that, but we've said that a few times already in this match, haven't we? Oh, and that's just the same old story. And you can see he's just growing and growing in frustration. Maybe in a touch of naivety, which sometimes is what you need in this situation at the start of the match, that perhaps from his body language, when he was looking quite comfortable, he didn't grasp how hard it was going to be to adjust to the match table. But as he's finding that out, as the racks go by, his head must be starting to spin just a bit. And the body language is in no way encouraging, is it? And Yap, of course, will pick up on that. Such an inscrutable figure himself. He knows a very comfortable win is here for the taking, if he can keep going the way he is. been the story of this match I'm afraid it's the second time he's had ball in hand and the second time he's missed with ball in hand yeah and the miss this time arguably the worst one he's had so far and you hear players say it sometimes that when you're out there under pressure you start to almost feel that you can't pot anything and the two that Ben Say missed suggests he's heading towards that territory Yap just rubbing it in here. And say won't have given up hope in this match. But as I was saying, I think the first priority for someone in his situation is to avoid the whitewash, and it's becoming a real possibility now because Yap is more than halfway there. He leads. 5-0. There has been a whitewash on table 18. Sebastian Bakowski of Poland has closed it out at 9-0 against Matej Kovac. You can see, you can pick out the various matches that you might like to keep an eye on yourself. Ralph Suke there over on the uh, other main table. I was telling you he was 4-1 down. We've had a look in there a few times in his match against Yuri Pishklov. And the fight back continues. It's level now there at 4 all. Max Lechner cruising now, 6-2 up against Eric Kohler. Bizarre Spahu of Albania. 4-1 up in his match now. Thomas Kaplan we saw there just going through at the bottom of that graphic, also a winner. Tolian Han of Singapore, that's one worth keeping an eye on. He's hanging on, 8-6 down against Clemens Ebert. And his compatriot is 5-0 up here. This time the one just caught the bottom jaw of the middle, so it's not disappeared. And it's a dry break, so Yap has not had it his own way on the break, even though the match has all gone his way, there you could see. Well, he's had five breaks so far in this match. Scratched on two, another two dry. Yeah, Michael, and obviously, you, you know, you can see the difference now, can't you, just by watching this match. You can see why this change has been made. 
and it's definitely going to be a good talking point throughout this event as it unfolds. I think some other sports can be slow to change, can't they? I mean, there have been calls for years to do something about the increasing dominance of power players in golf. Really, we haven't seen a huge amount being done. Now, there are other factors at play there in terms of commercial interests and potential legal disputes with tennis as well. I think there was a time when the people running that were perhaps a little bit slow to try to do something to limit the impact of the serve, which was starting to really dominate to an unnecessary extent. But I think in pool and match room and the organizers of these events are very quick to respond. And the players out there say change needs to be made. And all these things are evolving, of course, aren't they? Because these are the rules of the break for this tournament. It might very well be different when we get to another event in a few weeks' time. So I think that's all very healthy. Yeah, I think the big thing is obviously, you know, Matchroom have come into the game of nine ball and they're having a good go at it now as well. Certainly when I was on the on the circuit, they only had three events. One was the Moscone Cup, World Cup of Pool and, and the Masters. Now, now they've got a lot more events on the calendar and they, they are giving it a good go and talking to Matchroom, that was managing director Emily Fraser just in the background. She's sweating some of the action. And this break rule that we, we are talking about, it's not a new thing, you know, it's new to the matchroom pool arena, but we have used this break rule in other tournaments around the world. There's Emily. I think the philosophy that matchroom are bringing to their efforts to expand the game, or just get events on. You know, get people playing pool. If you need to change things in terms of format or break rules or whatever, shot clocks, all the rest of it, you can change those as you go along. But the key thing is to get events happening. In my word, they're doing that at the moment. Is the purple five gonna come to rescue? I believe it has done. This is table two action. Ralph was trailing 4-1 against fellow German Yuri Pisklov. But he's clawed it back to 4-4. The legend, he will not go down without a fight, that is for sure. That match is available on the Matchroom Pool YouTube channel. If you want to watch that one. Yap's got a long two ball out the jaws. These are horrible, you know, they really are. It looks so much easier there, doesn't it, when you sat here watching it on the screen, but when you're behind it, you just think, I'm never going to pop this ball. You mentioned Ralph Suke there, Carl. I think he's at a stage now in his career where he just enjoys turning up to tournaments and seeing what happens. I don't think he's ever going to be expecting to get back to the level he was at. He actually ran Yap pretty close at the World Championship last year, was one rack away from beating him to get to the last 16. What a fabulous shot that was, by the way. Never mind just pot it. He jacked up, speared it in, and he even moved the eight out because I think the six was a little bit tricky. So that is one for the Yap highlight reel. Not to take away from it in any sense whatsoever, but it's the sort of shot that's a bit easier to play when you're in as much control as he is at the moment. Not just the fact that it's 5-0, but the fact that his opponent is clearly struggling so much. Knows that if the shot does go wrong, the chances of him being punished are there, but they're quite minimal on the evidence of what we've seen. Over on table two, you couldn't see it, but what a fabulous kick shot Yuri Pisklov's just played. I'm sure that will be doing the rounds on the socials, so if 
you don't follow Matchroom Pool on socials, I suggest you do to see that kick shot. Unbelievable. Yeah, and Pishklov has given him a great chance now to halt Suke's comeback and re-establish a lead for himself at 5-4. We'll let you know how that goes. Normally when a player is leading 6-0, as it looks as though Yap is going to do in a few moments' time, you would imagine he's running out from the break all the time and dominating it that way. Now, with these break rules we've been talking about, that's harder to do. And it says a lot about both those rules and the nature of this match. But Yap, in a few moments' time, is probably going to be 6-0 up without having run out from the break even once. Completed the job, had that great shot, didn't he? That we were talking about queuing from the jaws early on and saw it out nicely from there. Two thirds of the way to victory now. Yap leads, no Ben Say, six racks to nil. 26 years of age now, had that great run at the US Open last year. Got to the final and he was in a strong position. He was one ball away from leading 9-3 against Carlo Beato. And didn't win another rack after that. Beato taking 10 in a row. Becoming the first winner of the US Open since Efren Reyes back in 94. And of course the US Open coming up again very soon. Back to Atlantic City again in October. And yep. You would have to think whatever happens here will go there as a player who will be strongly fancied to perhaps get that breakthrough win. Winning a title of that stature. It was one of those situations where OK, everyone remembers Beato won it, but some tournaments you see, the runner-up is remembered almost as much as the winner. It was such an exciting run he went on. He's on a very good run here, leading 6-0. He's potted that one off the break again, Carl. Yeah, that is intentional. That's what Yap is trying to do. He's done it a few times in this match, obviously. He's scratched a couple of times. He may have thought he was going to scratch again for a moment. Won't be happy with that one, but as you rightly said in the last rap, Michael, you just feel like he can do no wrong, even if he gives his opponent loads of chances. He has not give us any reason to think he can come back and close this match out. You just feel that maybe all goes back to that first rack. He was looking comfortable with the situation. He had his chances to win it, and if he had done, not saying he would have been leading the match necessarily, but could have been a very different story. And again, that was a testing little shot. He's certainly missed easier ones than that in this match. And just looks drained of belief. The winner of this match, incidentally, We'll go through to the next round to play either Ziga Kovac of Slovenia or one of the German contingent, Valerie Kulojans, who is leading 4-1 at the moment. Yuri Pishklov is now back in front against Ralph Suke at 5-4. And Mark Beisterbosch has closed out his match now. 9-2 winner over Daniel Munoz Oliveira of Spain. Told you earlier that he was on the hill. This shot's awkward. Doesn't matter whether you're 6-0 up or 6-0 down. This is not easy. He's got to get into the cue ball. And get it back over. Has he got enough pace? Is it going to get the, I don't know, the fine effort? He 
looks like he's playing the pot, doesn't it? So you can just just see the potting angle. Yeah, nicely done. A pretty bonus with the eight going in. And now after them two shots, Michael, he is in prime position. It's been good at this during the match, you would have to say. There have been times where the balls have been a bit awkward and it's just played one or two shots and suddenly it's turned into a clear rack-winning chance. I can tell you Max Lechner has won. He's beaten Eric Kohler 9-2 and he'll now play the American Robert Hart in the next round. He's one to watch this week, Max Lechner, and the reason for that is a few years ago he played a tournament in America. I think it might have been the US Open at the time before Matchroom took over. If it wasn't that, it was the International Open. Anyway, he got to the final, lost to Jason Shaw, and it was this very break rule that he was playing. Yap hasn't struggled at any stage of this match. But you wouldn't have said he was in absolute top form earlier on. He's starting to look that way now. He's coasted through that rack. Two away from completing the whitewash. And Lucius Yap leads Noel Bensay 7 0. Yeah, this is what a pool tournament usually pans out to be like. You know, you have some of the favourites getting beat early on, and other players seem to get put through the mill and win 9-8 and then players like Yap seem to breeze through but this is just the story of being a professional pool player you're playing all these events you go through every possible motion now you can see how that match finishes into the draw it hasn't quite updated yet as we were saying it has gone 7-0 Max Lechner there just above him with his comfortable win And uh, it could hardly be more different for the other member of that Singapore team who got through to the final of the World Cup, Toli An Han. He was well behind against Clemens Ebert. He's levelled it now at eight all on table 12. So still every chance that both of them will get through as the one ball flies in again. Yeah, so he's found the range with the one ball. Cue ball nearly goes in this side pocket again. This is this is interesting viewing this, but what is also interesting is he's potted the one. The cue ball's on the table, but this is why we have to use this break rule because he's got a tricky shot to come up with here now. He's got to he's got to avoid balls. He's got to pot the two first, and then the cue ball's got to avoid balls. Needs to slow down. This needs to slow down. He's lost a cue ball. and This is where the cream will rise to the top this week. It was so hard to judge, but he nearly judged it to perfection. Now he's going to be kicking one rail. I mean, listen, you're seven racks up. Your opponent's missed ball in hand twice. Just hit the three. Doesn't matter where it goes, does it? You're good for the round two. I think what perhaps didn't help Ben say in one sense is that this wasn't meant to be on one of the main tables and the scheduling was changed. So he didn't really have time to adjust his thinking to the fact that he was going to be playing on the main table like this. But then again, sometimes that can work in your favour. If you don't have time to think about it, you just get out and start playing your game. And either way, these are all things you have to deal with if you want to be playing in these big events. Yeah, as long as it's got six pockets, that's all that matters. Uh, 
glad to see if he's hooked. Is that a jump cue he's got? No, it's his plain cue. So he must be able to see the edge. And if he can see the edge, the problem he's got is potting this three. The cue ball's just coming away from the pink four, so that's not going to be easy. Here it comes. But that's all he could do, just pot the ball and then focus on this next shot. Maybe tempted into a bank into the top left. May as well. You may as well go out all guns. Slinging. Yeah, he just wants to give himself something to take away from it. Just a nice memory. You know, winning a rack. Well, again, he's showed patience and playing safe. That's fair enough. That's a good shot. He's certainly not been hiding his emotions, has he? He's looked a bit worried, a bit concerned for some time now. Really no reason to be, because even if he did get beaten 9-0, I don't think people would even take a huge amount of notice of that. It's almost what you would expect in a match like this. Wasn't quite sure where that pink ball was going to end up, but he purposely played the cue ball down in this area because he knew he had the purple five and the brown seven as possible blockers. If this pots in both top pockets, top right pocket would be an easier pot just because of the angle that is going in but maybe position is a little easier if you pot it into the top left two rails got to miss the eight ball with the cue ball ah nicely done nicely done indeed that's a little more like it Noel pressure that must be on you though in this situation when you're just desperately trying to get that one rack on the board and you know you've had chances like this in the match and pass them up will be quite a commendable effort if he can put all that thinking to one side just for another few moments here a few more shots Yuri Pishklov needs eight and nine to go six four up against Ralph Suke. Re-establish a bit of breathing space. He's left himself queuing from just off the rail on the eight, so it's not a foregone conclusion. That cheer you hear in the background is Pishklov support, acknowledging the fact that he has now deposited that eight and nine. So he was four one up against Ralph Suke. It went to four all, but he's taken two in a row now at a crucial stage of the match. So he leads six four. Now this can still go wrong here. And that's pretty good, Carl. Yeah, no one would begrudge this nine ball going in. You don't want to see a donut on the TV table. Well, Yap does, but we don't. Come on, Noel. This for your first rack at the European Open. Yeah, the only donut on the agenda now is the one I know you're planning to have for lunch, Carl. And a nice moment for Ben Say, then. He'll have the experience of winning a rack against a leading player on the main table and he will not be coming away from here with a whitewash. He will feel so much better about life now, even though he's still a really long way behind in this match. It's 7-1.
And there'll be more than one donut for dinner, Michael, I can tell you. Well, you know, you were always very jammy in your playing days, so. Seems appropriate. Still going in that last rack on table 12, Tony Ann Han, Yap's World Cup partner for Singapore against Clements Ebert, who was in command there earlier on. Bring you a result on that as soon as we have it. We probably won't have to wait long for a result here, but no Ben Say has made Yap wait a bit longer. It's 7-1. So another one potted off the break, but by a very different route this time. Yeah, it was close to potting that one in the side. British player Chris Alexander on the hill against Max Schneider. 8 0, he's leading there. couple of Romanians through. Babkin Milconia, 9-8 against Hassan Osman. And Robert Braga winning 9-5 against Gerasimos Trivizas. And Tolian Han, Yap's partner in that World Cup run for Singapore, has completed a remarkable turnaround to beat Clemens Ebert 9-8 and will now play Nick Economopoulos of Greece in the next round. Could go one rail or play the jump shot. Jump shot, it's dead straight. You would fancy getting close to the pot. That brown seven may Hamper is queuing a little, but he has got the jump queue. This is one of them matches, isn't it, Michael, where you just know the app's going to win and you just feel Noel's not really going to make something happen in this match. If he, if he is, he's got to win the next three racks, you feel. Try and get it to 7-4, even 7-5. That will just start to ask a few questions. Two's close to this corner. Oh, the pink four was in the way. Yeah, that's the only thing he's really got going for him at this stage. He can try and turn Yap's strong position against him. By, as you say, winning a couple of racks and just putting the kernel of doubt in Yap's head that maybe it could slip away from him. But it all feels a long way off, doesn't it? Because he played well in that last rack, but that really has been at odds with the way this match has gone for him. say this about nine ball though you know it doesn't matter even if you're playing on your own in practice sometimes some of the shots you get faced with they're just brutal and that's because you've always got to play for that lowest ball haven't you so putting the two for yap wasn't just the whole story there you had to try and get back on that three ball and that's why in the end it looked like <laughs> a really terrible effort That's not going to work. Does the two pass that red three in the corner? Maybe just goes off the left jaw. It's very tight. Ralph Suke still clinging on after losing the last couple of racks. He's at the table on the five ball with a really good chance to 
keep clinging on against Yuri Pishklov. Get it back to 6-5. Oh, he played the combo. Beautiful effort there from Yap. Great chance to get himself on the hill with the break. Yeah, if you're not watching Table 2, you can get Table 2 on YouTube, Matchroom Pool. Subscribe while you're there, of course. Because there's a good battle between two Germans evolving over on Table 2. Suke versus Piskolov. Piskolov's an unknown to myself, Michael. I'm not sure if you're familiar with him, but I bet Ralph knows him. And maybe when the draw was made, Ralph would have thought, that's a tricky little first tie match I've got there. Oh, well, these German players, a lot of them have been inspired by the exploits in the past of people like Ralph Suke and Torsten Homan and more recent times Joshua Filler. And that's why it'll be uh, perhaps a little bit of a barrier for Pishklov to cross. When he's actually on the brink of winning against someone like Suke if he gets there. He is on top at the moment, but only one rack in it there. Different story here, though. Yap looks to have done the hard part. In this ninth rack. Been around the scene for a long time, hasn't he? He's only 26 years of age, but was world under 19 champion almost a decade ago. And he won a lot of those big junior events around that time. Over the last 12 to 18 months, he started to really deliver on that promise on the big stage. What he really needs is to win a tournament of this stature. And it looks as though he's going to get off to a flying start here because he's very swiftly to the hill. He now leads Noel Bense 8-1. I'm going to throw this out there just because I've just watched the other table break. Ralph broke and he scratched. We've seen a few scratches, haven't we, Michael? This is our first match commentating. We must have seen four scratches. That's both tables because we're lucky enough to have two, v two TV screens in front of us. I'm just wondering if anyone is going to go down the middle and break head on, not do the cut break. Yeah, I was wondering about that. So why would a player do that? What would be the thinking there? I think... Maybe if someone is going to do that, it would be SVB, just because of how hard he breaks. So maybe he would forget about the cut break because he wants to control the cue ball and then just hope a random ball falls in the pocket. So I'm going to pay close attention to that when SVB gets his first round match underway. And other top players, of course, because... If you keep losing the cue ball like you do on a cut break and you get a few scratches, it's going to start to wind you up a little bit. And Boning will start against Martin Breuer. <laughs> and as we return our focus to this table, that's a familiar turn of events, Carl. Yeah, that's just purely down. If you want to pop the one ball like this, that cue ball has to travel across the table. Sometimes it's going to find the middle pocket. Other times it might can on a ball. I, for one, will be having a little nosy around the arena. I might get down on the floor, see a bit of the action and see what break shots I can find, what people are doing. Is everyone sticking with this hard cut break? Or is anyone going to go down the middle? And as another cue falls to the floor and Carl gets more fuel for his... Uh, Let's get some Q-Rax campaign. Noel Bense has got a nice chance here. As I say, he wanted to have one moment to take out of it. As we see, Yap, well, he knew long before it got to the pocket what was happening. But uh, he averted the whitewash, Bense, feeling better about life, as we said, and he'll feel better still if he can make it two racks from the last three here. Just what it's all about for a player like that, really. Wouldn't have fancied his chances very much of coming in and winning the match, but just take a few moments away from it. As much as anything, just show yourself that you are capable of winning racks on the main table in the hope that you'll find yourself back there. But 
That was a long way off target, Carl. And you know what? It might just have been his last shot. Yeah, I fear the worst now. He's had plenty of chances, though, so... It's not like he can go away from this match and just feel like Yap has won a few four-packs, you know. He has had opportunities. Looks highly likely that if Yap finishes the job here, it'll be Valerie Kuliantz of Germany in the next round for him. Kuliantz 7 1 up now against the Slovenian player, Ziga Kovac. Well, it was a big ask, wasn't it, for Noel Bense coming out here? Didn't expect to be playing on the main table. Scheduling change meant that he was out on centre stage. But these are the challenges that you have to deal with. And to be fair, he hasn't really dealt with it particularly well here. Confidence seemed to ebb away as the match went on. Found himself 7-0 down. Did manage to get one on the board. But in the end, it's a Lucius Yap who goes through very comfortably. Last year's US Open runner-up is the winner.